and here's something really cool. I went to Google Maps and uh, I found a, an old, couple year old image of the test strip. I'm gonna put it up. So this test strip across the street from us was just, no one took care of it, just empty mud and weeds. It used to be grass. So we took it over and this is what we transformed it into. Now this has had PGF complete, human char, and now has the growth regulator. Okay, so basically I think it'll be something like this. Look at that, look at the difference. Before, after. Before, after. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? Um, well, someone came over here and trimmed and blew all the crap on the hair. But, let me get some of this off so you can see it. <laughs> isn't it amazing? That's what this whole area looks like now. Wow, it's hot out here. It's about 95 degrees. <laughs> I always get a kick out of people that do fertilizer comparisons and fertilizer tests without doing a soil test first. We're gonna be talking about soil tests today. And why is that? Well, mistake number one they make is they put out fertilizers when they're doing their tests at different strengths. You should always neutralize your test with the same strength, same amount of nutrients. That's number one. Number two, if you don't have a soil test, let me give you an example. If my lawn is low in phosphorus and I use these three fertilizers, the middle number being phosphorus, which fertilizer is probably going to perform better? It's kind of easy to tell. So that's why it's real important for you guys to get a soil test at some point. I really encourage it. It's really simple, especially I always use now, I use Clemson just because it's one sheet, simple to fill out. You send it off. I'll put a link in the description below to it. Um, in about a week or two, usually about 10 days to two weeks, you get an email and there's your reports. <laughs> but I also like it because they give you the CECs, Caddy and Exchange Capabilities. Um, and that's important too, and especially now that we're using Humichar, we're trying to bump those up. So let me show you my soil test bags. After I collect my soil samples, which I'll show you in a second, um, I come out and I lay them down in the sun. And they've been out here for a couple hours burning up and uh, they're gonna be ready to go I think I'll have I don't know when this video is gonna go up but I'll have a link everyone keeps asking about the new granular lawn regulator the 13th or the 14th of this month I'll have the link up we got to wait for the factory to have a full production run that is just the most amazing amazing my front has never looked like this now this is human char PGF and now growth regulator on top and this is a scorching hot 95 degrees just pounding down on this that is just absolutely gorgeous so many people don't get soil tests and you really need to so uh I'll put links to anything I'm talking about in the description below. The first thing I like to have is I like, I always keep these brown bags in stock at the house. I think they're a 25 pack. Um, I like to use this thing. You know, when I ordered this years ago, I never thought I'd use it, but I use it all the time. I use it in the garden to put stakes in. I use it to install my solar lights over here. <laughs> I use this thing for everything, not just soil testing. Uh, we're sending off our soil garden this new garden soil we're testing the human char super compost we're going to send that off to clemson for testing so while i'm doing that i'm going to go ahead and take some samples down at the green because i think i've got a ph problem down there i think all the sand and all the rooting mix that we've been putting down there may may be off on ph i don't know because that seed while it's germinating it's just something's just going on with it it's not really growing strong like I should see because we put a lot of seed down. We put a lot of top dressing. It may just be pre-emergent. I may just have pre-emergent still down there, but I'm thinking it might be pH. So we're gonna do that. And then while I'm at it, I'm sending it off. I'm gonna do another soil test on my backyard. The backyard looks so amazing right now. So 
here's the problem that most people don't understand. Every once in a while, someone will say, Doc, 99% of the people put down PGF complete and they have love the results. Once in a blue moon, we get someone who says, I'm just not getting the same results. And I'm like, did you do a soil test? No. So I guarantee you're low on phosphorus. So let me take you down here. One thing we are going to have this year, hopefully out this fall, we're going to have um, a new fertilizer out for you guys. It really, I really designed it for the spring, for the quick start program, but it can also be used in the fall too. Um, it's a quick release fertilizer, unlike most slow release fertilizers, and it'll help you do corrections. It'll be really cool. So it's such a lovely golf course. Such a lovely golf course, full of human char. <laughs> and that's a good looking golf flag there, Doc. That's a really good looking golf flag. This is obviously gonna be green, green one. GR1 for green one. BK1 will be backyard one, you know, all different crap like that. Now on my putting green, I'm gonna do this a little bit differently. I really only care, I'm trying to figure out what's causing that, what's going on with the, uh, the new seeds. So I only want really the top inch of soil, which is gonna be kind of hard to do. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going through here and I'm taking out organic matter. Because unlike my other tests where I want that, I want the two I want the one and a half to three inch mark I want the one top one inch of soil in here to see what's going on with this germination so basically you're gonna have a bunch of plugs in here and all you do is just crumple them up and I set these bags on the sidewalk in the sunshine and uh, they dry out in a couple hours when it's 95 degrees outside. Let me show you how simple this is to do. Now, I know everyone doesn't have all this at home, but I have a printer and I have actual labels, peel and stick labels at home. Um, I just went and found a small box. So let me just walk through this real quick. So what I did was is I have my bags and I put my, I put a, just you make up your own code. BK1, that's back one. Uh, GR1, that's green one. So I got a little box. I got a little box. I just found this box in my office and uh, you, my recommendation is, is keep the box as small as possible because what I'm going to do is I'm going to print a label, I'm going to put it on the box, I'm going to include my check, and I'm going to stick it in my mailbox with a flag up. So I don't have to go anywhere. I just do this from home. I'll put a link in the description below to the soil test sheet. If you uh, open it up with Internet Explorer or the new, what do they call the new Internet Explorer, Microsoft Edge or whatever it is, um, you can actually go in there and you can type right into it. You don't even have to write on it. So you can see, like I put all my codes in. I don't know if you can see, I put all my codes in here. So I got CF1, CF2. I got all these different codes. I checked the standard at $6 each. So for a total, for a total of $36, I make out a check. Um, I include the check in there and I go to my label printer, print my label off, I put it on my box, and I put it in my mailbox, and I'm done. So uh, it's pretty easy for me. I can do a soil test in an hour. I can have a soil test ready to go, put it in my mailbox, the mail lady will pick it up, and it's off. And again, about 10 days, 10 to 14 days, usually I'll have my results back. This really is an eye-opener, folks. It really is an eye-opener. I can't tell you how important this is. Um, you just, you can't do anything unless you know. And that's one of the things, especially like this green, I was gonna start playing with it and I was like, dude, you know better than this. Do a soil test and see if there's any issues first, then go back and work with it. So anyways, guys, 
That's how you do a soil test. It's real simple. The Bermuda Lawn Guide. If you know the Bermuda Lawn Guide, get it. If you're not using Humichar, use Humichar and PGF Complete. Again, the new um, granular growth regulator, which is really hard to screw up. <laughs> and it's so, let me, let me explain the new growth regulator, why I like this. I've held off on doing growth regulators for a certain reason. You can damage your lawn and you can apply them wrong. Number one. Number two, they're kind of a pain in the butt to apply. You got to make sure you're mixing it right. You got to calculate your spreaders. And if you're going to walk around with a hand sprayer, it's just, it, they're, they're kind of a pain. And I've, so I've sort of left off on them. This new granular is so easy to put out. It's just like putting out some fertilizer. And I have tried, I have tried folks. I have tried to damage lawns with this <laughs> and I can't do it. And that's why I'm recommending this product. The link will be up June 13th, uh, July 13th, July 14th, whatever. Hit subscribe. When that video, as soon as they tell me it's in stock, I'll go ahead and put it up. And uh, that's about it. Talk to you later. Doc.